iCos is an asset tool you never heard about because you're producing broken code and that's nothing new. In this video I will show how even an undisputed buffer overflow champion like you can use this open source static code analyzer. So instead of wasting any time I will switch the order of how people usually show tools. So I'm gonna do it like this. First I will show you how to use it and its functionalities. And then if you're still interested in it I will show you how to build it. Okay, let's go. So first let's see if iCos has been installed properly. And in order to do that, just type iCos dash dash version. Government of the United States. Okay, this seems to be working. And we will first analyze a single file. If you go to the iCos repository, you will see that in the readme they provided this example file, which we're gonna analyze. It's this file. And if you run the iCOS analyzer with this file, it will have a buffer overflow at line 8 and 9. So let's see if that works. I already created the file and now we need just to run iCOS file name. And the program is definitely unsafe. Line 8 and line 9. Now, if you're working at my job, this is your sign to push the code into production, especially if it's a Friday afternoon and you, you want to just go home and start the weekend. When you see this, just push the code and call it a day. Okay. Now, what iCos also provides is this really nice dashboard tool, which you can use to then analyze the output. So you just need to type in iCos dash view and then the output name which in this case is output.db and then just run it. Now it opens this really nice dashboard in your browser, which then you can use to analyze the project. And in this case, since we analyze only one file, we only see one file, but you can also analyze a whole project and then you will see multiple files. Now, when you click on it, it will highlight the buffer overflows in line eight and line nine. Buffer overflow accessing index 10 of global variable A of 10 elements. Okay, now since we really want to analyze just one file, iCos provides the option also to analyze whole projects. And in order to do that, you need to run the command iCos-scan before you run your build commands. So if you're building your project with CMake and Make, you're gonna just run iCos-scan before these commands. Let me show you how this works in practice. So I created this example project called project. And if you take a look at the source code, it has a main.c with the main loop and the main calls the functions which are defined in functions.c and the functions in functions.c are purposely made to cause trouble. Stuff like buffer overflows, uh, dereferencing null pointers, division by zero and so on. So let's try to analyze this project. Okay, so first we're gonna create a build directory. And then we're going to call icos-scan. And since we're building with CMake, we're going to call CMake and point to the path where our CMake list file is. In this case, dot dot. Okay. So now it asks if we want to analyze it. Yes. Again, yes. Okay. And now we can run again icos-scan-make. Again, it asks if we want to analyze it. Yes. So now if you take a look at the output, we will see that it has two unsafe checks. And since I'm the person who coded this, I know it has definitely more than two unsafe checks. Now, if anyone's wondering why does it show only two unsafe checks, if I'm saying that there are much more unsafe checks than just these two. So what I've observed is that ICOS after encountering the first critical error, it assumes that the rest of the code is unreachable or dead code, which we can see here. Now, some static code analyzers stop after encountering big issues and some keep analyzing and generate a report of the whole code base. And this is not wrong per se. So if you take a look at main.c and if the program crashes at the first line and ICOS assumes that the rest of the code will not execute, it's not wrong. But as I said, some code checkers, analyzers analyze the whole thing independently if it's going to crash or not. Now, maybe there's also a way to set a flag somewhere in iCOS to change this behavior, but I haven't found the setting. Okay, let's go back to the analysis. Just like when you're analyzing a single file, you can use iCOS view to view the report in the dashboard. 
So just type in icos view and then the name of the project.db. The project in this case is called static code analysis. And now, as you can see, we have multiple files since we are analyzing a project. Now, if you click at main.c, you will see that the first function has been executed. It says no problems. And the rest of the functions are dead code. Okay. If you go back to the functions.c, you will see that the function that we executed in main has a buffer overflow. Now, if you're wondering, why didn't it check all the other functions from functions.c? Because it certainly has a lot more problems than just this buffer overflow in the first function. Well, the reason is because in main.c, I'm not calling these functions. I'm just calling buffer overflow, uh, null pointer analysis, and double free analysis. And since ICOS detected a problem in the first function, it marked the rest of the code as dead code, since it's not going to be executed. Okay, so that's how you analyze projects with ICOS. So another interesting thing with ICOS is when you analyze projects or files with the ICOS analyzer, you can change the optimization level or turn it completely off. And in order to do that, you just type in ICOS dash dash up none if you want to turn it off and then you can analyze a file if you want to do the same thing with the project you can just go in project list files build so we are looking for this .bc file and then you would run icos dash dash opt none and then static code analysis .bc okay and then just run it and now we run the analysis with turning the optimization off. Now what's interesting is if we go back to the single file, we can observe that when we analyze a project with the optimization turned off, that ICOS performs much more checks. So let's try it out. So ICOS dash dash up non loop. You will see now that it's, it has 32 checks. And when we do the same, but without turning the optimization off, it will only have 16 checks. So that means that parts of the code are not being optimized out. And because of that, we have more checks when we turn the optimization off. Okay, so that covers the basics. I mean, there's a lot more you can do with this tool. Feel free to download it and try it out. But now let's take a look at the testing. So first we need to go to the ICOS repo. ICOS. And then you go to the analyzer. And in the analyzer, you can build the test cases. So I think we have a build. Okay. Let's create a build directory and build. And now we can call CMake. Okay, that worked. And now you can build the test cases by typing in make and check. Okay, this is now gonna take some time. Okay, so one test out of 15 has failed and that's uninitialized variable. I'm not sure if this is supposed to fail. It might be that some dependency is missing or that some dependency has not been updated properly and now it's failing. Now, what you also can do is, and this might be interesting for the beginners, is to go in the regression test folder that's basically in test and then regression and now as you can see i have all these folders and for each test case that we tested we have a folder full of examples so let's say we want to do some buffer overflow analysis we can go in this boa folder and then you have a lot of files that you can test and now what you can do is just type in icos and then pick a test case let's say test2.c this program is potentially unsafe but it's not definitely unsafe and um, that was test2 so test2.c yeah it's a very short program you can run it and you can see it's it should be safe you can do the same thing with the unsafe tests that would be icos test dash two dash unsafe dot c 
and as you can see this is definitely unsafe now if someone's interested in learning about buffer overflows or any other thing you shouldn't be doing this is the place to go so another thing you can do is in each of these regression test folders let's say in this buffer overflow analysis folder you have a executable which is called run tests and you can use it to run all the tests in this folder so you will need just to type in run test and then you need to specify this flag flag user lib llvm 14 bin clang and now you can run it and as you can see all the tests have passed okay now something else that i observed while testing the icos analyzer is that it doesn't work 100 percent properly when trying to analyze C++ projects. And if you go to the ICOS repo, you will see that in the issues, someone raised an issue that, um, no, 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 just let me find it. Okay, ICOS assumes all code is unreachable. So that's the same issue that I had when I tried to analyze a C++ project with ICOS. And then one of the developers responded to it saying that it might be related to the C++ ICOS analysis. So the tool is not working 100% properly when, you, when analyzing C++ projects. So if someone wants to test the tool and then encounters these issues, this might explain it. Okay, and now for everyone who's still watching, let me now show you how to build this. Okay, so you can find the repo by just typing in ICOS NASA and then it will be the first link. Let's copy this link and the developers, they recommend using homebrew to build the project, but I had some issues uh, doing it with homebrew. So I did it with uh, sources. So yeah, you can use homebrew that, that didn't work properly and uh, building it from the source. Okay. Let's create a new directory. Let's call it Git, and then we can do this. go in there and now let's take a look at the dependencies okay we need a compiler cmake boost blah 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 blah. let's start installing everything so first let's do get update password is one then sudo apt install lib boost dash all dash dev so obviously i already have installed all of this uh, gmp dash dev okay then we need to um, mm, dash dev okay there's an install missing then we need the tvb okay then we need the LLVM 14, this is very important, 14 dev, clang 14, okay. And now we need to create a symbolic link for LLVM, so I'm going to explain what this is in a moment, uh, LLVM dash config 14 and then LLV um, config okay this already exists but what this does is it basically creates a symbolic link or a shortcut named LLVM which is then pointing to the 
LLVM-config-14-executable, the binary. So this is probably not the most, uh, the best way to do it, but it works. And you can also, when calling CMake, specifying a variable for the LLVM config and then point to, to this LLVM-config-14, okay? And now last but not least, in order to create the Python scripts, you need to install, um, whoops, you need to install Python 3.12 dash this. Okay, I already have installed it. And now we can create a build directory, build, build, and then we can call CMake. Okay, when that's done, we can just call make. Okay, once that's done, we can just run make install. And that should be it. Okay, now it's installed. You can just um, run icos dash dash version to see if it works. And if it can't find it, you can add it to your path variable and then try to run it. Okay, so basically that's it. I showed you in the video how to use the tool and how to build it. Let me know in the comment section which analysis tools and testing tools you are using in your projects. If you like the content, hit like and subscribe and see you in the next one. Tariq 10x.